Hey everyone, welcome to another weekly news roundup where we bring you up to date with what's happening in the WoW scene. To kick things off, we're about a week into the launch of Shadowlands and so far things are looking pretty good. Not only have we seen the best response from our community in a long time, with some of the most prominent members raving about the game, but critic reviews are also looking incredibly promising, with Metacritic scoring Shadowlands at 82 and the user score coming in at 6.2, compared to BFA's catastrophic user score of 3.0. This is a huge improvement and we are extremely excited for the start of the PvP season. Next up, we've got some PvP related hotfixes. Storm, Earth, and Fire, also known as SEF, can now be cancelled. The ability basically splits your damage by 3, but every spirit does 45%, so 135% damage in total. Before, if a major hunter would root or freeze your spirits, you would lose 2 out of 3 chunks of your damage. As of now, you can cancel Storm, Earth, and Fire if that happens, so you don't lose damage making this an excellent quality of life change for Windwalker monks. Next up, we've got a hotfix to the Gladiator's Medallion, which was working in a very strange way. Prior to this hotfix, you could break out of almost anything that caused a loss of control of your character. To give you an example, before, if a mage would accidentally trinket in their own ice block, they would break out of it. This obviously wasn't a massive problem, but it's still good to see Blizzard on top of these minor issues. We've also seen some changes to legendary recipes. The drop chance from Mythic Dungeons is now much higher as it was before, and even Heroic Dungeons have seen an increase too when compared to normal. And speaking of Heroic Dungeons, Blizzard have also removed the daily lockout from them meaning that you can spam them until you get your legendary. This is certainly a great change in our opinion, as randomness is always something that can be tuned down to make systems more determinable. Last up, since the pre-patch for Shadowlands hit, players realized that main stats became much more valuable than secondary stats, and so were making use of BFA jewel crafting gems to increase their main stat. Because of this, Blizzard have just nerfed the main stat from these gems by 50%, meaning players will no longer need to use them and instead will be sticking to the newly added secondary stat gems in Shadowlands. Moving on, we've got a quick recap on where you should all currently be with your Soul Ash and Renown. As most of you know by now, Soul Ash is required to craft and continuously upgrade your legendaries. Well, last week there was an issue causing players who completed a Torghast run without looting the final boss to not receive their precious Soul Ash in their mailbox. This has now been fixed, and moving forward, any Soul Ash you forget to loot will be mailed to you. And just as a quick update, as of this week, if you've been maximizing your gains, you should be at a Soul Ash ash cap of 1520 or 1620 if you've completed a mission on your covenant mission table for an additional 100 ash. Getting to 1520 would just require you to do both of your layer 3 Torghast runs along with this week's quest from Bolvar which rewards 100 soul ash. Bear in mind that this assumes that you were already at the cap from last week, so if you missed out on some last week then you will be behind. You should also be up to renown level 6 this week, which you can achieve by completing the return lost souls quest, earning 1000 anima, and this week's campaign campaign quest which unlocks at Renown level 5. If you're confused about any of this, check out our guide on the three things that you have to do in Shadowlands, which walks you through this step by step. Completing this week's campaign quest also means that you'll unlock with your second soulbind. Before we move on, plenty of you have been asking which legendary you should craft now that most players have enough ash to craft their first legendary this week. Well, while you may want to rush into crafting something, if you're not absolutely sure what your best legendary is, it's worth holding off until the Mythic Raid week to see if you get any tuning changes that might impact which your best legendaries are. This is what pretty much every top PvE guild is doing. Oh, and if you're wondering which legendary you should craft, we'll have a guide out next week that covers which legendaries are best for each spec and why. Next up, we have seen a questionable change to reputation requirements for sockets in the Maw. From previously only having to be revered with the Maw faction, Venari, it has now been increased to Exalted. Therefore, it will be a much longer grind than we thought. With this change, the race to get the required Required reputation to obtain the sockets may be reduced, but for the long term, it will make it almost impossible to get sockets on your alt characters. This could be quite a problem as you almost can get another extra 100 versatility with 6 sockets and on top of that, the newly introduced PvP set bonus increases all offensive versatility by 40%, so it essentially doubles down the value of having these sockets. 
we would like to see some catch-up mechanics for alts or make the reputation required account wide. What do you guys think about the rep grind for sockets and will you be doing it on your alts? Let us know in the comments below. And speaking of alts, we've also seen players reporting on how long it's been taking them to level using the different methods available. The newly introduced leveling mode, Threads of Fate, gives you the option to skip the long and boring leveling campaign. So you will level through world quests, side quests, bonus objectives, and dungeons instead. Many players are using this mode to chain spam dungeons and complete the zone quests at the same time. It turns out though, speeding through the war campaign without the alternative Threads of Fate option is just as fast with Without the completion of the actual campaign. When you hit 60, you can skip the campaign and move on to the endgame at any time. So in the end, the choice is yours. Either spam dungeons with friends, solo blast through the campaign, or level up through the thread side quests. Either way, getting to max level shouldn't take too long. Last up, we have a quick look at the release of Naxxramas. The Scourge Invasion and Naxxramas are finally released, and players can now once again experience the old Forgotten Raid. Unfortunately though, the timing seems to be off, and players are expressing their concern at this. Given that Shadowlands just released last week, we're seeing the final and most important part of Classic WoW coinciding with this, which is definitely going to leave many players frustrated. Still though, the top players within the WoW Classic scene were there right as it released, and the guild progress managed to achieve the world first Kel'Thuzad kill within two hours of release. All right then, thank you everyone for tuning in. That's all for this week's news. We'll see you in the next one. For now, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and let us know how you're enjoying the expansion so far down in the comments below.